The ruling of Progressive Congress on Tuesday accused the leading opposition parties in the country of orchestrating the demonstrations that took place simultaneously in Kanu and Niger State on Monday. But the People's Democratic Party denied the allegations saying the protests were merely a reflection of the hardship in the land occasioned by the economic policy of the ruling party. The allegation comes barely 24 hours after angry youths and women took to the streets of Mina and Kano to protest the biting hardship, inflation and rising cost of living in the country. In a, Simon, in a statement issued by the National Public Secretary of the APC, Felix Mocha, in Abuja yesterday, the ruling party fingered the opposition party as being the brains behind the demonstration which it claimed were mere political. In reaction to all of this, the Labour Party has also asked President Bola Ahmed Tunubu to seek help in addressing the high cost of living in the country before the situation get, becomes unbearable. The Labour Party said the federal government needs to take action to reduce the hardship being faced by Nigerians, and this message was conveyed by the Labour Party National Public Secretary Obiora Ifo. He said that it is of a team of deep concern over the increasing cost of living in Nigeria and how millions of Nigerians are battling with the crisis of food shortage, hence the need for the federal government to do something to turn this year around. And also urging the federal government as a point of urgency that it should address it on time before it becomes too late. But whether the political class turns it into a political issue or not, the truth still remains that Nigerian seems to be going through one of the most difficult times in their history due to the growing cost of inflation and pace caused by it. But the big question or the big story for today is what needs to be done first to change the narrative and reduce the hardship experienced by a great number of Nigerians. Well, a look at this and more as it concerns the growing hardship that many Nigerians are going through is what this edition of the big story is all about. And we're talking about growing hardship in the country and federal government urge to address it. And that's what we're having as a major discourse today on the big story, looking at not just the protests that were staged earlier this week, but also the hard or the hardship being experienced by millions of Nigerians, especially as we have the biting food uh, price and the uh, perceived shortage in uh, basic food commodities and uh, what seems to be more of a problem as it concerns the biting inflation. Well, anyway, to help us talk about it and not to bite it off is no other person uh, but our very guest, the social critic and also commentator, and I'm talking of no other person but Chief Daniel Ekibo. Good morning and welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, good morning, bro. Now, before we go deep into the economic crisis and hardship that uh, many Nigerians are presently facing, I, I, I want us to first address the issue of the protest. Okay. Uh, that was uh, staged in uh, Niger State and Kano State. Funny enough, um, it happened simultaneously, though. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm just a bit concerned about this because the ruling on Progressive Congress feels it's more like politically motivated, and uh, it was done by some political players yeah. trying to have a cheap point, yeah. especially as uh, the growing hardship persists. And uh, that's their reactions to it. Undermine the opposition feels differently. Yes. And uh, well, but but for me, I, I really want to get your reaction as it concerns that protest. Let's look at the protest first, uh, because uh, that seems to be the order of uh, the day, especially in almost every news outlet. Do you feel it's more politically motivated, or it's an outburst of the present reality on ground? Well, thank you very much. Good morning, viewers all over the world. Yeah. The truth is protests, mm. you know, no matter how politically motivated or not, yeah. are essential ingredients that you must expect in any uncooked, or that is, a food properly uncooked. Mm. You cannot expect people to be passing through this, this kind of hardship. And you rule out protests. Okay. If not that Nigeria is that country where protesters mm. have no have no social guarantee. Mm. They have no security. Because we've witnessed 
serious protests across the country before yeah. and the outcomes mm. so people are actually afraid to come out to vent their anger by way of protest yeah. so th these recent protests are in some parts of the country no matter how hard the ruling APC tries to tag it as being political they are, they are, they are, the outcome of the reality is on the ground people are finding it very difficult to make ends meet. You understand? So under some circumstances, you actually do not need them to get another motivation by way of gratification, take money, go to the streets to protest. If you give the entire Nigerian states and cities a level playing ground, you will not be able to comprehend the, 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 the ranges of protests that will happen. You understand? Because we are at a breaking point in Nigeria. So to go, to go to the point, actually, we don't need any motivation. Nigerians don't need any other motivation by opposition, ruling party, or whatever. To file out to the streets, you understand, yeah. to find your anger to the government and the whole world. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, as much as you feel it's a pure reflection of what seems to be happening on ground, um, the ruling of Progressive Congress has told the opposition or to stop complaining and uh, look out for solutions rather while also the PBP says the APC is a failure as it concerns what seems to be happening on ground yeah. and, and funny enough the Labour Party just like my introduction has told the federal government to seek for solution for uh, from any other place they can get yes. it especially when they feel uh, the federal government doesn't have it and, and the issue is now being made more political yeah but should that be the case? Because, because why I ask this? Um, Suffering knows no whether you are APC card carry member or PDP or Labour Party or NPP. Yeah. The suffering that's in the land knows no political party. It hits everyone. So should there not be a collective solution to this rather than making it more political? Well, let's start from the T N. Collective solution. Collective. Yeah, but how, how can we achieve that? We, we run a democracy that is unable to harmonize ideas. We run a winner takes it all economy. Okay. The APC today, after clearing or so called winning the elections mm. last year, they feel they are the elephant. They find it difficult to go to the Labour Party men for, for or PDP men mm. to seek for ideas. So the, 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 the issue of collaborative approach to it is not it's a near zero deal. You yeah. understand? Mm. Then I'm coming back to look at whether it should be taking us. Uh, it should be giving a political yeah. Yeah. coloration political or not. discourse or rather a national uh, problem. How can we, res how can we excuse the, the, the political aspects from everything that's happening today? Personally, I could boldly tell you that 80 percent of the problems we are facing today all generated out of the first subsidy remover immediately first skyrockets every other thing goes up as to inflation when there is scarcity there must be inflation Most certainly. you understand the cost of living, I'm not entirely blaming it on government mm. for the hardships mm. we are facing in entirety. Mm. Because, like the issue of food shortage mm. and all of that, contributes to inflation. Of course it does. We, we, if we recall, the last year, mm. we had a, 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 a skin burning dry season that totally destroyed farm crops you understand and in that year the, the, the past year the the farm produce that were supposed to have you know grown to help nigerians have square meals for this year they were damaged by the excruciating heat and the few crops that skate through cannot cope with the demand and that is part of that, that, that is part of the inflation mm. no, 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 wait, 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 let, 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 let's really put this into perspective because yeah. 
on, on the right now, I don't want it to sound more political about the different political parties. Yeah. I, I feel we also need to have a perspective of why there's a, a food shortage or if there's no food shortage. Yeah. Let, let, let's try to put that as a base uh, uh, in the course of our discussion. Yeah. Uh, now, the protesters in Niger State, what they said was a mudu. They call it a mudu. It's, it's used to measure. Yeah. A mudu of rice now goes for 2,000 naira. Yes. That's what they said. And that of maize, which is also a staple food in the north, yeah. is being now sold for 1,500 naira. And why I'm saying this is Mr. President, Chief of Staff, Femi Bajabiamila, came out yesterday after that meeting he had with Mr. President, after he came back from France, yeah. and uh, some major stakeholders, like the National Security Advisor, Neil yes. Rubado, and some ministers, um, he had the opportunity of briefing a journalist after that very meeting. And, and he came out with all full glaring to the public to say, there's no food shortage. <laughs> there's just the talk of those that are opposed to the policies that this administration is, is going through. He came out categorically to say, well, sorry, what you are saying are all lies. There's no food shortage. So it, it brings me to ask, are we really in a food crisis? Or do you feel there's really no, there's enough to feed the nation? Let, let's, let's try and put that base, because that's another base of argument and confusion that seems to be raging between the ruling or progressive Congress and other opposition parties. But let's, let's make this more about us, yeah. ordinary Nigerians. Do you feel there's a food shortage crisis in the country as it stands? The, the answer is yes. There is absolute food shortage crisis. Personally, I own a planting farm. Okay. In the past year, all of them died because of the heat. Okay. Now, what I was expecting to harvest for this year, there's no way I can get it. And now if that happens to 10 other, pe other farmers, yeah, basically, the, 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 the numbers of plantain would be reduced. Been reduced. Yeah. And if we're expecting, maybe we're expecting to shunk a trailer load mm. into the market, a particular market, mm. for a month, with such situation, you cannot give the, the trailer load, isn't it? Yeah. And if you are coming with maybe a quarter or half mm. of the trailer, mm. then the prices will definitely go oh. up. Because those who need them are more than the available product. Which is common economics. Yes. So anybody, Bajabia Mila or whatever, that says there is no issue of food shortage has lost touch with realities on the ground. So you feel it's only economical with the truth? Yes. The, now, issues of food shortage cannot entirely be blamed on the government. Well, anyway, I was, I was almost <laughs> going there, though. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. So, if, for a man of Bajabi last statue coming up to say uh, there is no food shortage, when even your government is not supposed to be blamed, mm. it is the acquisition pro uh, process mm. of those food items, the food stock, that we can blame on the government. Okay. Because when you pay so much to ferry your, your products to the market, you will sell them so high. So that is now the effect of that first of the removal I mentioned earlier. Okay. So if he was talking from that angle, I will understand. But coming out to say there's no food shortage, no. Okay, there now, is food shortage. Okay, well, anyway, you, you, you've, just, you've just given us a clear-cut answer to say, well, there's food shortage. Uh, and you hinged your blame on a whole lot of factors. Yeah. Um, we were fortunate to go to the market just this week, before we started this program, on Monday to be precise. Okay. And we priced a normal local rice. They call it mango rice. That's yeah. the name they call it. A bag is now 70,000 naira. Yeah. As against 63,000 naira in the past week. Yes. And we also went to the market. A basket of gari sold for 1,350, 1,400 naira just two weeks back. But as it stands today, it's 1,700 naira. Yeah. And I'm now being forced to ask, can you pinpoint a very direct reason or reasons 
Yeah, you just highlighted one. That okay, well anyway, the climate, which is nobody's gonna yeah. blame, is um, one of them that will be hinged on the fact that this is why we're having food price. But, but let's look at other typical critical reasons. And the reason I ask this question is, if you look at it in the last eight months, in a row, yeah, food inflation has been the driving force for the whole general inflation. Yeah, and there's every likelihood is going to continue into the middle of this year. So, but I'm really, really concerned in wanting to know the very reasons, reasons that we're having this food inflation. Let's really understand that. The, the basic, the biggest reason mm -hmm. is still the lack of abundance. Lack of abundance. Yes. Cost produce, oil. produce are not in abundance okay. supply. Give us the There's a shortfall. Why the shortfall? Now, for you, you, I mentioned it earlier. Okay. The when you talk about the the commonest food we consume, which is the gallery. Yes. You understand? Mm. The ones that are in the market now mm. were not planted this year. Yes, of course. If they were planted in that the had gone year. And a lot of farms couldn't produce because of the, the, the excruciating heat. Now, it is going to take another planting season with fair weather to get stability in the production of that particular food category. Now, coming to, to, coming to the area of inflation mm. this week, mm. the other week, There's also an I, I happen to be close to... Uh, some traders mm. who bring in food stops from other parts of the country. Mm. Now, what I've come to understand about what causes irregular inflation mm. among them is maybe you go to market today, mm. on your way, your, 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 your vehicle gets spoiled, mm. and sometimes, especially for those dealing with fruits, mm. you talk about banana planting, perishable, product. perishable products, you have a breakdown on the way, if it lasts for two days, your products are gone. And maybe we are expecting maybe two, three of such mm. or such uh, Tr cars uh, or, cars trucks. or mm. trucks of the product in the market. And only one comes. It cannot be the same. Then two, the drivers too. Every now and then, when you have a breakdown of your vehicle, you fail repairs and all of that. If you carry somebody from the need to Ugeli, for 60,000 on a shutter last week. And this week you have run a lot of expenses. You feel, no, I'm going to take 70 or 65. And then the trader, that factor into the the trader must bring the products. He or she agrees with you and when he gets to, to, okay. to his or her destination, adds that little, you know, increase from the driver. Distribute it on, on the number of, uh, of products he's, he or she is shipping out. And it, 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 who bears a crunch? The consumer. Are you getting it? So all of these are part of the... So, so, so why, why not blame the federal government? Because that, that, that's the reason... Yeah. The federal, are you saying it's only hinged on the pure fact of the subsidy removal and more like a spiral effect on the prices of almost everything? Good. You look at the protest in Medugur and Kano. Yes. Specifically. Yes. These are, these are some of the... Meduguri, Kano... And some of those cities mm -hmm. in the Mina, north Niger, the are Niger. the hub of food production yes. in Nigeria. Of course. So if those same people comes out to protest that these are getting out of hand, you can imagine what other parts of the country would, would, would pass through. Because you constantly, you constantly see trailer loads or food stops running from the north to the south. To the south. And now the northerners, if if you if you if you happen to to be a traveler that spend days nights in the north, you must agree with me that the price of commodities, in contrast with what you have in the south, the dis the difference is so very much. So very much, yeah. There was a time I told a friend that I bought suya of like five hundred naira in Abuja, and it was hard for me to finish it myself. But if you purchase at the same time, mm. I brought that in Abuja. You if you come to the south, 
and buy the same quantity, it is going to cost you nothing less than two to three thousand. So on, before the man in the north will complain of of biting hardship, know that we are at the breaking point. Now to your question, wait, waiting because I got met inside. Yeah. This is it. It don't boil down to one thing. You see, I will keep saying this. This first subsidy removal was ill-timed. Because they told us that as we remove it, we are going to reinvest. Yeah. And I'm telling the government of Ahmed Bola Tinubu that that is capital lie. They only remove it and, 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 and give their cronies an expo on how to further cripple Nigeria's economy. It is all about removing the item from one thief's mouth and putting it in another thief's mouth. It must be stolen one way or the other. If you have left the, sub the subsidy there, Nigerians were taking it like that is the only thing they benefit from the government. From the government. Because even why, when the PDP uh, government was there, mm. first subsidy was, was running, we were saying, oh, these people are they, they are exploiting Nigerians, eating no, so much money. But the little that was trickling in was able to, to subsidize and give Nigerians a somewhat stable economy. And then you have come to remove it. We still don't have light. The large chunk of money you remove from the fuel subsidy, you cannot invest it in power sector so that there will be stable light. Yeah. No stable light. Your refineries are not functioning. You still keep importing fuel. Now, there are issues of modular refineries which the amount you have removed from the subsidy would have been enough, would have been enough to site in nearly all the states of the Federation to make fuel available. The entire problem we are having in Nigeria today revolves around transportation. If transportation is affordable, people can even migrate from where in the city of Ugali today. People can decide to say, let me go and go to worry. It is cheaper there. You go and buy. But in a situation where your transportation from this point to the other place is higher than whatever price difference. You get stopped. So the government's problem is their inability to redirect the funds be made for be made for for subsidy. If they redirect this, the the their the thinking capacity, I must say, is low. So if PDP is attacking them, saying they don't know what to do, truly have they known what to do? They don't know. And the likes of Baja, uh, uh, Femi Bajabramila, they don't even feel any of these things. It, it has not affected their incomes in any way. It has not affected their allowances. It has even also not affected what they steal. Well, anyway, as have been alleged, I, I'd rather put that there. <laughs> but I'll plead with you to hold on. We need to go on the break now. But when we come back, we'll continue our discussion as we look at the present state of the nation, especially as it concerns uh, the growing inflation and hardship being experienced by many Nigerians, and the recent call seeking for federal government to do more as it concerns that, and also deal with not just that, but also the growing taste of dissatisfaction that has resulted to protests in Lagos, Niger, and also Kano State in recent time. Let's go on a break.